grew up in a small farm near Lincoln. A.J. Milanigan. with animals. I'm feeling a little bit bad about mine. <laughs> so um, maybe she can give me some tips after this. Um, when I was about six years old, my parents decided to move out to a farm. And at the time, my biggest concern was that I wasn't going to get to watch Dumbo Circus on the Disney Channel anymore <laughs> because we wouldn't have cable. Um, my mom was a, is an extraordinarily smart woman, so she had started taping the episodes like two to three months in advance of the move. Um, but still, I knew that eventually I'd get tired of the reruns and I was going to need some more excitement. Uh, I really didn't need to worry though because my parents were on it. As soon as we moved out, they, they, built a, they dug a pond and they raised a barn and they uh, built a chicken coop and most interestingly, they decided to sort of dabble in the world of ornamental fowl. Um, <laughs> they went to the local duck lady and bought one of each, I guess, uh, and she threw in a pair of African geese. Now, if you've never seen an African goose, it's huge. And if you're a mid-kindergartner, it's ginormous. <laughs> because it is your size. <laughs> I looked it up when I was thinking about the story because um, I thought maybe I was exaggerating, you know, my, my wonder at how big they were, but no. An average six-year-old girl is about 45 inches high, and you can guarantee I was less than that. Uh, <laughs> um, a male African goose can grow to over 36 inches high, so those suckers came up to my shoulder. In addition to their height, African geese have these great white feathered breasts that sort of sway back and forth very commandingly when they waddle. And they have long white necks. They have a, a stripe of brown that runs from their back all the way up to their beak, which is large <laughs> and black and makes two sounds, sort of a honk and a <laughs> In my opinion, they are not a charming addition to any backyard farm. <laughs> but for a while, things were pretty calm. You know, we had two of them and they'd, they'd waddle around and if you got close to them, they'd kind of waddle away faster and it was really fun to watch their big butts shake. Uh, and they'd lay giant eggs all around the yard so it was like a perpetual Easter egg hunt, which was awesome. But some of my younger siblings, you know, there's, there's 10 of us, and some of the younger ones aren't too bright. <laughs> Sorry, Tony. Um, and they didn't know to let the well-hidden eggs stay hidden, um, because the, those eggs had spent at least two to three days ripening in the 90 degree weather. And when they found one, they'd get really excited, my little brother and my little sister. And there was one occasion that I remember that they found a couple really ripe eggs. And they thought it'd be fun to tap them together and see what would happen. And then all of a sudden, tap, tap, tap. <laughs> Instantly crying and gagging because it's so bad. It's horrible. And my mom sees them from the window. And so she runs out, but then she stops. Because you know you can't get closer than like maybe 10 feet to them. And she starts gagging. <laughs> uh, honey, it's going to be okay. <laughs> So what can she do but she grabs the garden hose, right? <laughs> Turns it on full throttle and just, I love you, but, <laughs> right? Take her clothes off and they're bawling, you know? And I'm watching from the window like, that's terrifyingly awesome, right? <laughs> so, but other than, you know, the occasional egg explosion, for a while things were pretty calm. Until like many couples, um, Alexander Gander, as we named him, and Lucy Goosey. We were very clever. 
they had a baby and they became psychotic. <laughs> Their baby Sheldon, we are so, so clever, um, grew to be the tallest of the three and he had been attacked by a raccoon or a skunk when he was little so he had a scar that wound around his neck up towards his eyeball. This is really tall. He was like super badass. <laughs> and the three of them, formerly timid, they turn like street gang. <laughs> and so no longer would they waddle away, no. When they saw you, they would start to flap their wings and honk. And then they'd get closer. And when they got closer, their necks would get really stiff and they'd lower them to the ground and they would charge at you full bore, going shh, shh, shh. Try to spear you off at the ankles. <laughs> at that point, there were two things that I always tried to do. One, I'd try to make it and one like felt swoop up the slide and see if I could camp out on the top of the swing set. Or I'd hope to God that I could reach the picnic table and I'd just kind of perch there until Dad would come out the broom and rescue me. Um, after that had happened several times, my dad pulled me aside one day, kind of came down to my level and he said, AJ, the next time they come after you, you just turn around, stick out your arm, grab them by the neck, give them a good shake. They'll leave you alone. <laughs> now at the time I'm like six. <laughs> I'm thinking like, Dad, my, my teacher told me my pencil grip kind of sucked. Like, I don't think this is going to work, but okay. <laughs> Went in the closet to read a book or something. Um, a few days later, I was out on the basketball court, you know, the front driveway, playing some horse totally winning by myself. <laughs> and I had let my guard down, right? And they come around the corner. They totally jumped me. <laughs> so I have like a split second to react and I'm thinking, okay, dad, I'm gonna do it. So I reach out, I don't even think my eyes are open. I'm just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and I got one, sweet. All right, now at that moment, two things happen. One, I scare the crap out of the other geese, and they're like, we're out. Like, she means business. And then I realize, I caught one. <laughs> now I have Sheldon like six inches from my face going, shh, shh, shh. Now what? And I realize in horror that my dad didn't tell me step three. <laughs> step one, grab the goose. Step two, give him a little shake. Step three, nope, <laughs> nothing there. So I think, okay, maybe I can just drop him and run, but no, he is pissed and he would probably just eat me. So I kind of scoot over a little bit because I'm by the house and I just do the next best thing and I start going, banging on, this, like, on the side and going, no, please help me. Seconds, hours, I don't really know which. My dad comes out, and I think as soon as I see him, I just drop the goose and I run to him. But in my six-year-old mind, I, I, I imagine him sort of picking up Sheldon and punting him across the yard in some sort of feathered football, you know, very bravado. Um, whatever really happened, I don't know. But after that, my parents realized that the <laughs> benefits of having ornamental geese were probably not uh, equal to the cost of the therapy that I was going to need if they sticked around. So my dad made a few calls and he found the name of a guy who had a traveling petting zoo. <laughs> Called him up and said, we got three geese for you. Beautiful free. One stipulation, no receipts, no returns. As soon as they're gone, they're out. Came and picked him up the next day. Um, we checked the papers for a few months after that, just to you know, see if there were any incidents. Uh, but we never heard from them again. I can't say that I ever 
missed those geese. <laughs> but I can tell you that they taught me a lot. By seven, I had discovered that even though I was small, I was ballsy. <laughs> and that sometimes that was great, but that other times it was better to back down. And sometimes it was okay to just hightail it and run. <laughs> More importantly, I learned that my parents were not always right. <laughs> but that when it really mattered, they've totally come through. And they've proven that for several years. And I'm really grateful for that. Thank you.